Um, since we are highlighting bipartisan solutions, I am absolutely going to spend the most of this time talking about NATO and Ukraine. But first, you each are also involved in bipartisan solutions on two different but big time topics in the news. So first on the issue of guns, Senator Tillis, you are a lead negotiator coming to agreement on this issue of gun safety and mental health got 15 Republican votes in the Senate last night, although it's not final passage. Tell me, how did you walk into these conversations? And is it difficult to push back against so many in the Republican base and the gun industry who does not want this to happen? You know, I, I don't think so. Uh, first off, I think that the the four of us that worked to uh, craft the legislation that was voted on the, the the initial vote last night was a strong vote, and a part of that was because we kept a number of members informed. Uh, we think that what we're doing here, and and I would say that that mental health is the foundation of this bill. It's nearly a fourth of the the plain text of the legislation that we put down. Uh, school safety, uh, avoiding what we saw in Uvalde occur again through hardening schools and better training and better operating procedures for law enforcement. I think dealing with gun trafficking is something that's very important and we do that with the straw purchase provision. And then trying to make sure that moving forward, if states uh, move towards uh, crisis intervention orders or red flag laws, that they do it with the full with full compliance to the Constitution. So when I look at and read again, I would encourage anybody who has a concern with what's being discussed in the media, they should read the 80 pages. It took me about 45 minutes this morning to go through it word for word. And if they look at the plain text of the legislation, I think that it's balanced. And it was a result of good faith negotiations by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Some, though, Senator Tillis, one quick follow-up, say that this does infringe on Second Amendment rights. Does it hurt your argument? Well, well we need to make it very clear. Uh, there are some states that raise the age to 21. In my opinion, that's a three-year mandatory waiting period for an 18-year-old. We didn't do that. We have no mandatory waiting periods. We took, we implemented no legislation that restricts gun purchases, the, the, the guns that are currently available. And... Uh, and we're trying to work really hard to make sure that states come into compliance with the Constitution. Um, I don't think anyone debates the, the need for the investment in school safety and security. And uh, that's why I think it's a, it's a balanced bill and I think it will age well.